activate Ender 3 homing. Sure, activating the Ender 3 homing. Hi guys, Jenny here again. So, I've got my 3D printer set up in Home Assistant and I've got various controls exposed to Google Assistant. So, how have we done this? Let's get into it. First of all, you can see my Home Assistant interface. This is my Lovelace page for my Ender 3 printer. I've got power control at the top and two icons that signify when it's printing or if there's an error. I've got a link to my Octoprint website. I've got the picture from the camera. I've got two mini graphs showing the temperature and the, of the nozzle and the bed. And then I've got various sensors that are exposed by the Octoprint interface. But here's the clever bit. We press the enable controls button and it brings me up some further options. I've got preheat and cool down options, home to tell it to home the printer, level bed, this of course goes round and probes the whole bed, and the change filament script. So, the first thing we need to do to get all of this working is to have Octoprint running and connected to your 3D printer. If you haven't already got Octoprint running, Go and check out the video by Teaching Tech, the link's below in the description, and he'll give you a good guide on that. Okay, with that done, we need to get the information into Home Assistant. Now to do that, we can use the built-in Octoprint component. In your configuration, you simply need to include the Octoprint component. Tell it the host, that's the IP address, of your Octoprint server and the API key. If you haven't already got an Octoprint API key, go into your Octoprint interface using a web browser, press on your username in the top right hand side, click user settings and then go to application keys. In here you can see it says there are no application keys registered yet. So in the application identifier type in something you can remember that is what you're naming this application. So, in this case, I'm calling it Home Assistant. I've hit enter and it's generated me the API key. We can copy that there, and then we can paste it straight into our config. Okay, back in the configuration, we've got the IP address and the API key. We can give it a name, Tell it the number of hot ends we've got in tools. Tell it whether the bed is heated or not. True is for a heated bed. The sensors that we want to use are the monitor conditions, current state, temperature, job percentage, time elapsed and time remaining. We can also use the binary sensors, printing and printing error. Pull in as many of those as you want. Then. I'm also pulling in the camera, which is an MJPEG camera, and again I'm giving it the name Ender 3, and then I give it the still image URL and the MJPEG URL. Okay, that's got Octoprint in, but it doesn't give us any control over the printer. So how do we do that? We're going to use the Octoprint RESTful API in order to be able to send commands directly to the Octoprint from Home Assistant. Over here, we can see the RESTful API documentation from Octoprint. There's a link to this down below. Okay, there are many API keys we can use. The one I'm going to show you first is the one to shut down Octoprint, because this will allow us to shut down Octoprint and then turn off the power 
so that we don't have any issues with corrupting SD cards. So, we tell it to shut down by calling this rest command. I've called it ender3 octoprint shutdown, tell it the URL. We need to put in the headers the API key. This is the same API key as we've used for the octoprint component. And we send in it through using the post method. Now, in order to actually shut down the printer, we can use a script. And here's mine, the Ender 3 safe power down script. The first thing we're doing is we're checking that 3D printer printing sensor that comes from our octoprint component to make sure that we're not printing anything. We don't want the printer being turned off while we're in the middle of a print. So if we're not printing, then the first thing we do is call that rest command to shut down the octoprint server. We then wait for 20 seconds and then we turn off the power supply. Okay, I've set up a template switch to control the printer called Ender 3. It uses the value template to get the value from the 3D printer PSU switch. If it's on, this switch will be on. If it's off, this one will be off. When we turn it on, we want it to call the switch turn on service to turn on the 3D printer PSU. When we tell it to turn off, we want to call that script that we've just created. So that gives us a single switch to turn on the printer and turn it off safely. On my Lovelace page for my 3D printer, you'll remember that I have a enable controls button. The reason I have that is simple. I am going to expose the scripts that control my printer to Google Assistant. But I don't want somebody else walking across the house and saying, OK, Google, cancel 3D print when I'm in the middle of a print. It needs to be thought about first. So if we first have to tell Google Assistant to enable the printer controls before we can then use the printer controls, it'll be a lot safer. In my configuration, I've made a switch, Ender 3 controls. I've told it it's an MQTT switch and I've given it a command topic. This could be anything we like, nothing's ever going to receive it. It's just so that we've got one entity that controls these other controls. Now, every script we use from this point on can check that those Ender 3 controls are turned on before they run. The other thing I've done as a safeguard is I've made an automation to turn this switch off again after a delay of two minutes. That means if I turn on the controls and forget to turn them off again, it'll turn itself off. And anybody saying anything won't have any effect on the printer. On the Lovelace interface, I can just press the enable controls. And then I've got the buttons to do what I want. If I'm printing, I get a cancel print and a pause print button. So let's look at those first. The rest command we're going to call is an octoprint job command. So we tell it the URL. The payload we're going to define in the script. In the header, we include the API key, the fact that we're the type of a JSON, and post. Over in the script, for the cancel print, it's fairly straightforward. We check that that Ender 3 controls switch is turned on, and then issue the rest command to that job command. And the payload we're sending is command cancel. Simple. Ender 3 pause script first checks the state of that Ender 3 controls switch, sends a rest command to the Ender 3 job command, and the payload is command pause, action, pause. So to resume, in the next script, we have command pause, action, resume. Excellent. 
That gives us our pause, resume and cancel. The only thing that's strange with this, if you're using Google Assistant, is that you can't say end of three, pause. You have to remember to say activate end of three, pause. It's just the way Google Assistant talks to the script. It wants to activate them. In fact, sometimes it wants to turn them on. So you have to be a bit creative when you name some of your scripts. The next one is my bed levelling script. This will just run round in my case using my BL touch going round the bed and creating the mesh. I've called it end of three bed levelling because activate end of three bed levelling sounds quite good. Activate level bed Sounds a bit strange. Anyway, in this one, we're starting again by checking that the control switch is turned on. If it is, we're then also checking that the printer is in the operational state. We don't want to send this command in the middle of a print. We're calling the end of three printer command and we're sending the raw G code. G29, that's the home command. Now there are other ways of doing this, but the printer command in Octoprint allows you to send any G code directly to the printer. So the rest command for that is here. Again, we're just sending a rest command to the URL for the printer command. The payload we're sending is command and then the command which is pulled in from the script. In the header again, it's the API key. I've got a cooldown, a preheat PETG and a preheat PLA. Now these work all the same. All we're doing is changing the temperature we're using. So you can make as many scripts as you want with as many temperatures as you want. What we're doing is we're calling these two rest commands. The tool command and a bed command. Now I've called the tool command a nozzle temperature and I've called the bed command bed temperature because that's what they control. So for the tool command we send to the URL of the tool command. The payload we send is command target this is telling it we're setting the target temperature. The targets that we're setting, we have to use more than one because Octoprint allows us to have more than one hot end. I've only got one, so I'm putting in tool naught temperature, and that temperature is the one we send in the script. If you've got two, you then want to have tool one and maybe temperature one, and put that one in the script as well. The bed temperature works the same, except we only have one bed. So we just need command target, and the target is this temperature. And that one's going to the Octoprint bed command URL. In the script for our temperature control, all we need is check that the controls are on, that the current state is operational, we don't want to do it while we're printing, and then we send a bed temperature of zero to cool down, or whatever temperature you want, for whatever material you want, for the bed. And then we call another rest command for the nozzle temperature, and give that the temperature that we want it to go to. Just remember, zero turns off the heater. Anything else, we'll set that as the target temperature to heat the nozzle to. So I've also got a rest command for homing. And this is actually a print head command. For homing, I don't really need to use it. I could just issue a printer command of G28 and that would do the job. But I've included it for fullness. We could change this 
instead of calling home and say jog and then we could give positions to jog the printer to and it would move the printer. I haven't seen any need to include that so I haven't but it works just the same. You may have noticed I had a change filament button on my Lovelace page. I'm not running the standard Creality end of 3 control board and mine includes the M600 advanced pause script. If you've got that board, you can do the same. The beauty of this printer command control is you can send any G code direct to the printer. Okay guys, that's it. I haven't got my whole configuration on GitHub yet because I'm just in the process of switching over to packages. My configuration's been split up for a long time, but I've decided to embrace packages now. I have already got the 3D printer package separated out, and I'll post a link to that down below if you want to have a look at it. I'll also post my Lovelace configuration as well for that page. I hope you found this useful. If you have, please hit the like and subscribe buttons, remember to ring the bell. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.